presented by Dick's Sporting Goods. Tonight, we're at Temple Hill, North Carolina, as the Iowa Hawkeyes take on the 12th ranked Tar Heels of North Carolina. The ACC has some work to do. The Big Ten actually won the first six games before the ACC pulled off their first two victories. We need eight to clinch. The challenge looks right now like it's going to go towards the Big Ten. It's all part of Jimmy B. Week for Cancer Research on ESPN as we continue our commitment to the B Foundation and Jim Valvano's dream to defeat cancer. And welcome inside the Dean Dome. Everyone, John Saunders alongside of Dick Vitale. Jim Valvano was a very dear friend of both of ours. We, we miss him dearly, but he would be so proud of the work that's been accomplished in his name. I think there's no greater compliment than the fact that his legacies affect the lives of so many. $130 million thus far has been raised by the V Foundation to really help in finding a cure for cancer and most of all help in various cancers. It's unbelievable in research, the dedication of the board of directors. They do a phenomenal job and I'm proud to be part of it. And his daughter Leanne is a cancer, or rather, Jamie is a cancer survivor. Leanne and Nicole are the other daughters, of course. I want to wave and say hello to them. But uh, that's a great story in and of itself. So let's look towards the game right now. And the Iowa Hawkeyes and North Carolina Star Heels have uh, familiar faces on both squads. Well, you got familiarity because Marcus Page was a star as a scholastic player in Iowa. And he said no to the Hawkeyes, and he came, came out here to play for North Carolina. And he's such an incredible player. He can drive the basketball. He can shoot the perimeter shot. He's a true All-American. On the other side, you look at Iowa, they got a very versatile performer. He passes, he scores inside, and he's a key ingredient to their basketball team. They need a signature win. They had two opportunities, and they came up a little short for Texas and Syracuse. This is the third time, and they want to take the third strike. Let's look at the starting lineup. Anthony Clemens is the guy who runs the point. They got some guys who shoot pretty well. Jared Utah, and in the middle, the big guy, Adam Woodbury, he goes about 7 1. Marcus Page, just heard Dick talk about running the point. And they are big everywhere. I talked to Fred McCaffrey this morning. He's like, these guys are huge. So we'll have his eye open for that, trying to slow them down. It's an improved Carolina team, especially defensively. No one has shot 40% against North Carolina this year. Even Butler, who beat them, did not shoot 40%. There's Clemens coming off the screen and knocks down the first jump shot of the game. Nice little execution. He played on a high school level with Valentine of Michigan State. Played for Carlton Valentine. Coach used to play for Michigan State. His son, Denzel, now a star. And a man defense by Iowa. Good hands by Clemens to get on that ball. Page watches as the clock goes to under 10. Working on the bigger white. No problem shooting right over top of him. Well, he's got some quickness too against White, but shot right over the big fella from the perimeter. He's the one guy that can make threes. If they have a little negative North Carolina, is finding a secondary shooter from the perimeter. Swings it around. White finds Clemens. That's a deuce. Oh, no, that's a three-pointer. Nice little pass there by White finding Clemens. Clemens starting off on fire here. See Roy Williams talking to the, the troops as he gets set for another run in the ACC. Boy, these, these schedules, Dick, have gotten so tough as nobody plays what you used to call cupcakes anymore. Tell you what, they've had some cupcakes, but these are the kind of games you get a true evaluation of your team. You find out your strengths, your weaknesses. Nice drive. Fran McCaffrey said this morning as well, he said, these are the types of plays going to the glass. He says, he's told his team, you must go strong, and if you don't have a dunk, <laughs> or an easy layup, you better push it out to somebody else, throw it outside, because North Carolina is too good at recovering on defense. Well, the key for 
when you look at Iowa, is getting a little bit more balanced scoring and be able to play against the physical kind of basketball teams that they're going to face out in the Big Ten. Went to the NCAA tournament last year. Frank Hill back to the excitement up there in Iowa City. It was the first time since 2006 they got, they got into a tournament. The NCAA tournament. Going a little half-court trap here. You got a matchup with Page. The other people on the perimeter are really struggling shooting the ball. Jackson has potential. And tip back up and in. Kennedy Meeks. He's a different player this year. Lost a lot of weight. Still has a ways to go. But he's really contributing on a regular basis. Blocking shots. He's off off the mark. And that'll belong to the Tar Heels. Talk about a real wide body on the inside. Just took it over that spin into the lane, and there's the tip. Nobody blocks out and gets to the glass. He's a big physical presence when you look at Meeks. Oh, bad pass right there. Bad pass. Gasell with the steal and throws it down. Gasell played on the AAU circuit with Page. They played together, buddies. They're not buddies tonight, man. They're playing for bragging rights. They're playing for bragging rights. Gasell thought he could pick another one off there. These two, two guys know each other really well. Said he spoke on a phone three times this week. He's not strong enough with that move, and Woodbury's in there between him to seal him out. He sell this great job anticipating steps in the lane as a score in a jam. So Marcus, how do you like that baby? I'll tell you what, I, I had a look at this. Well, we both did have a look at this Iowa team. Nice recovery by Woodbury defensively. And Meeks just stays with it. He's going to have some great numbers this year. Big improvement from last year. Getting a lot more minutes. I think the North Carolina are a deeper basketball team. They got some veterans. They won 24 games last year. Got beat by Iowa State in the second round of the NCAA last year. The drops jumper is just a little short. Packing around going after that rebound. Go back to the Tar Heels. I started to say we had a look at this Iowa team in, at Madison Square Garden where they lost two games, but they really were in both games. The Texas game, they were leading at halftime. And it really was a team that you thought was very capable of winning each of those games, and they looked pretty good in losing, if you ever want to say that. Well, they lost that last game to Syracuse in the last minute of that game against Texas. Had a strong first half, and then Texas dominated the second half. Shot outside, just a little bit too deep. I think one concern you got to be right now for Roy Williams with Marcus. You want him to play within the framework of the team and not get caught up with the fact I played against my buddies in Iowa. It's not Marcus against Iowa. It's North Carolina against Iowa. Well, it's, it's hard to do that. <laughs> Marcus Page, you, you know, you grew up a short drive away from the campus. Marcus made an extra pass there for the open shot. And that's the area I talked about earlier, John. That really is a problem for them. Trying to find that second shooter from the perimeter. Nice backdoor cut. Yeah, he he got it. He traveled. That was good defense by the Tar Heels. Tar Heels put themselves in a position to cause that turnover. Off to a pretty exciting start. Iowa leads by two. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is brought to you by Dick's Sporting Goods. Every season starts at Dick's. And Jared the Galleria of Jewelry. Truly unique designs that you won't find just anywhere. That's why he went to Jared. Welcome back to Chapel Hill, North Carolina. The ACC Big Ten Challenge presented by Dick Sporting Goods. Iowa with the early lead. There's Marcus Page. Dick, we talked about back at uh, He's from Iowa and had a chance to go to Iowa, but decided when he got the call from Roy Williams, he said, I'm gone. But there they are as teammates, Mike Cassell, Marcus Page, Adam Woodbury, who's the big man in the middle for the Hawkeyes. He's a terrific kid, too. Coming out of high school, he had a 4.08 GPA, Marcus Page. He's a leader. He's so well-liked, well-respected. Started off slow, slow his freshman year. City of Iowa's been good to Roy Williams. Harrison Barnes, 
What about Collison? What about LaFrance? I mean, think Hydrup. They're all Iowa kids who play for my Kansas. It's a little easier to get them to come to Kansas, I would think, and to come to North Carolina. Tokato with a drive on the baseline. Oh, great! Bounce pass down to Isaiah Hicks. He just has to throw it down. They were late to get back on defense, but they closed in a hurry. Tokato did a great job passing that basketball. And Hicks has been a surprise player. He's gotten better and better, giving him positive minutes off the bench. Very athletic, blocked shots. So, so, so I do all that work on defense. You should call a foul on him after the ball got away. North Carolina so approved on the defensive end from last year. They made more of a commitment this year to playing team defense. And it shows statistically. Teams have not shot 40% against them. And that always gives you a chance to win. Good hands by Utah, but it comes right to Page. Just drops that one down. And he's going after the rebound out of bounds. North Carolina. Another great strength of Marcus Page, Don. Late game situations. He really is outstanding. Little zone right now defensively. To try to pack it in. Got a match up with Page. They're going to let him shoot that ball from the perimeter, John. They're going to let him shoot that ball from up on top. They'll take it away, shade Page wherever he goes on the floor, make other people shoot from the perimeter. That was freshman Theo Pinson with that attempt. Bryce Johnson commits the foul. His second. Look at some bench time coming up. He's a guy very active on the glass, has good touch around the basket. Johnson, physical physicality has always been a little bit of a dilemma for him. Good ball screen up on top. Cassell, or Cassell rather, knocks that one down from outside. Cassell really plays hard. He did a great job reversing the basketball. When you swing the ball side to side, good things happen. Oh, great. Recovery down underneath by Gabriel Olashini. He's playing with a bit of a heavy heart today. Lost his father this week. I read that. He's going to be going to the funeral services, I guess. Uh, in London. In London in about another week or so. So, what's our thoughts with his family? I was zoning out here. Really make North Carolina shoot the ball from the perimeter. Jackson, Big Ten ACC, you had some great matchups. Louisville yesterday gives Ohio State their first L. Miami's been a real surprise in the ACC. Wow, they're 8 0, Jimmy Laranegas kids. Nice backcourt, Rodriguez and McClellan. Looking for the one guy they can depend on from out there. Marcus Page does just that. They got to find him. He's got great rotation, an excellent stroke, shoots him with a lot of confidence. Oh, well, Cassell comes up and buries one from two, but it's an answer back just the same. He said, hey, buddy, I know you can shoot it. I played with you, but I can shoot it too. A little you shoot that, right? Uh-oh, uh-oh. He can't make it two in a row and then almost saved. And gets a souvenir, but... They don't expect it to be a player. As Page up top, that's where favorite place. He loves to shoot it there. And Mr. Cassell right here. Up to my nylon, a little NBN time. Five is a little quiet right now, a little quiet here. It's not going to be quiet at Madison, I can tell you that. That place is going to be explosive. Well, Okafer and Kaminsky. It, it shouldn't be quiet, but if Duke gets out to an early lead, you never know. It'd be interesting. The one thing I love about that Wisconsin team, I was talking to John Anderson at Sports Center. I believe they got the second best front court basketball. With Kentucky have the best, and maybe Kentucky has A and B, as I said earlier, and they have the next one. Because Kentucky has two, they rotate. Yeah. Okay. I'm curious, Coach Vitale, what you think of that call? <laughs> yeah, I mean. Wow, wow, where's the car? Blow the whistle, man. Blow the whistle, blow, blow the whistle. whistle blue, but a little physical. It, it didn't get, not the way I thought it would. 
Nice job by Ola Chaney to move his feet, stay yeah. in front. He did. He cut off the baseline. Didn't allow him to make that turn. Page will uh, drive this time around him and loses the handle. Ola oh, Chaney right on the floor. What a terrific pass, though, John. That baby was laid right on the money. I was laid out there like a Peyton Manning Josh or a Tom Brady. Wow, Oglesby with the catch. And the pass, and Shaney finishes it off. Right. Oh, I just knew that he jumped back. Now, Nate Britt just knocked down that jump shot. And that looked as sweet as any shot I've seen out here tonight. He shot that with right-handed. He is left-handed there. Yeah, but he's really worked to becoming a right-handed shooter. But he shot left-handed last season. I know. So it's not like he made this jump. He just he has been doing back and forth. He shot left-handed last season. But he's trying to learn how to be right -handed. What do they call it? Ambidextrous? Ambidextrous. Wow, Very I can't good. believe I used that. That's he, one of one syllable. Signs, he signs believe. with his left hand. He's left-handed. But he, he said until he was 11, he played with both hands. Last year didn't go the way he wanted to as a lefty, so... He said, I'm going to go yeah, right. Yesterday, Britt says, I'm going to go to the right, right hand. But, well, you know what makes it even stranger? He shoots free, free throws still with the left hand. That's wacky. <laughs> Bottom line, you better make some shots. Make some <laughs> shots. Left, right, make some shots. Oh, well, he just made that one, so... The verdict right now is looking good in his favor. Probably had some players you, you wish they'd have switched hands. <laughs> Half court trap. Just trying to take him out of any rhythm. And then I'll drop back. Drop back in the, the play of man now. Hey, hey, play multiple defenses, rotating zone and man to man. Big body James down on the block. And there's a push over the top. Foul on the floor going after that loose ball. Yeah, watch right here. Oglesby with the great pass. The look. He laid that perfect. Oh, Shady with the jam. Up, up, and away from Chapel Hill. The fans and you at home watching, you can see the purple ribbon on Coach Roy Williams' lapel there. And you can see the purple laces in the shoes of many of his players. That is for pancreatic cancer research, the color that represents those people who've been lost and those who are fighting for it. Ted Seagroves was the neighbor of Coach Roy Williams, but more than a neighbor, a very, very good friend. They went on trips together. They'd go recruiting together. If Roy needed somebody just to be in the car with him when they drive, Ted would go with him, and he lost him. He brought him up to tears when you and I met with yeah. him when he brought up the name of his friend. So he sent our sympathies out to certainly his friend's family. He passed away yesterday. And don't forget, of course, that's what Jimmy V. Week and the, the V Foundation is all about. That's fighting cancer. Don't don't forget to go to JimmyV.org. Call 1-800-4-JIMMY-V. 100%. Every single penny goes directly to cancer research. Another four-star performance by the foundation, by the groups that measure just how well charitable foundations are doing. Another four-star performance. Ted Navigator gives them the highest rating you can get. Have an endowment, hope that endowment, all the administrative costs will pay. Nice pass inside. Good ball movement. Not a lot of space in there. No reset of the shot clock. Jackson rims out. Takes down. Jackson's a guy. That, they think Jackson's a guy that can step up and make some shots. From inside 15 feet and closer, he's shooting like 64%. Oh, nice move on the outside. That was Utah who got that. Lean in, no good. Rebounded by Jackson, up and in. Jackson very versatile. He's a guy very active. Came out of Texas. Play here at North Carolina. They expect big things out of him, John. JJ. Mataros look like they're just doing what Kentucky does. With, you know, almost an entirely different group on the floor. 
a little different than Kentucky. You know, they bring in nine McDonald's all Americans. <laughs> hey, they're not bringing in fried chicken here. Three top 15 teams headline the SEC Big 12 doubleheader. At seven, Miles Turner leads number six, Texas, against number one, Kentucky. And Billy Donovan, Reloaded Gators, Bill Seltz, 11 Frank Jayhawks. Each look for state to win. SEC Big 12 Challenge begins Friday at 7 on ESPN. Home court of Paul Shoots and Billy Donovan is really trying to get that squad going after a couple of losses over in the Bahamas. He's had a few injuries that really have hurt them big time. I'll be down here in Lawrence for that matchup. Kansas had a nice win over Michigan State. Over in Orlando. It was like a home game for me. <laughs> you should start talking to your, all your coaches, friends, see if they can have a tournament just for you. Maybe they could play all their home games. Woodbury's the guy that's got to start giving us some scoring inside. Well, he's capable. He's got good skills. He's capable of doing that. And early in, in the very first game against Texas, I thought he was going to have 20 points in that game, and he cooled off, but it's almost as if he stopped being as aggressive as he was earlier. you got to be assertive and want the ball. He's got pretty good skills. We've got a timeout on the floor. Iowa with a four-point lead. Iowa and North Carolina, John Saunders, alongside of Dick Vitale. We're halfway through the first half. You know, John, Iowa's got to get a signature win. Right now, they got wins over Hampton, North Dakota State, Pepperdine, Northern Illinois, and Longwood. And their two losses were against elite quality teams, Texas and Syracuse. There's a chance for them on the road to get a win that will give you some big-time confidence. They could walk out of here for a victory, as you can see. The game against Texas doesn't look like that score was close, but it actually was a close game. They played brilliantly that first half over against Texas. Over the just short of the front iron. Toe to toe. has worked really on his handle, trying to improve his shooting as well. Into that ball into the paint. Down by Johnson is short. He's usually so effective on the baseline, Johnson. Oh, White. Well, uh, White gets, gets knocked down by Johnson. He got back very nicely. We got a blocking call. I think it's a good call because I don't think he beat him to the spot. I don't think he was there set defensively. No way was he set right there. I think that's a block. Aaron is such a hard thing to call. The block charge is so difficult. It's been sweeps each of the last two years. It's been hard to grow for many, many a year. But you have to blow the whistle and call it. You called it quickly with authority, and I like that. I also like it at the end of the year how the officials, they go through all, those, all of the tapes and review whether or not you got it right or wrong. I'd love to have to the seat that... When they, when they get the call, you got 58% right and 42% wrong. Well, 1989, they got one wrong here. The wrong guy shot a free throw to win the game. Who White Marble in 1989. He finally admitted, he finally admitted, yes, I went to the line. It should have been Ed Horton. Ed Horton was a very poor free throw shooter. Who had a big, big game in that game. One point win in that game for Iowa. Marble went to the line and made one out of two to win that game, 1989. Everybody in the place at High Turner was working that game. The Carolina fans were going bananas. They felt that Wharton was supposed to go to the they line. They were right. And they were right. Marble finally admitted it to Rick Brown, the journalist from the boy. I will walk out of here with a victory. I want to say our best to Roy Marble. He's in a real battle with cancer. His son now playing for the Orlando Magic. He's been as a star here in Iowa. It's just another example of how insidious that disease is. Just, uh, we've got to beat it. He touched the ball really well. He took the threat position. Shot clock at five. White lets it go. Nothing doing. Great defensive stop by the Tar Heels. They got beat by Butler because they were dominated on the offensive board. Butler had dominated offensive rebounds. But then they came back and showed character, even Florida and UCLA. Jackson's floater. 
Jake Thorpe, and he gets his own rebound and tries a tough pass underneath. Very tough shoot. Taking yeah. that ball right to the basket, and he got fouled. Yeah, I don't see there's any way that Joel or who was down as hard to see Kenny Meeks. I don't see any way he was going to be able to come up with that ball, even if that pass did get through. Is that zone? Force them to shoot from the perimeter, trying to jam inside. They better make sure they find Page when they reverse that ball because he can absolutely shoot it. And they're looking for Page. Completely Page, nice pass into Jackson. Tries a floater again. I love that shot, but he's 0 for 2. He's usually very effective on the inside, John. 15 feet and in, he's the kind of Gassell. Whew. Nice little touch right there by Cassell. He's really plays hard. What I like about him, you see a lot of intensity, a lot of passion, plays hard all the time. Eight point lead for Iowa is the largest of the game. Page tries to answer back, it runs out. Strong rebound underneath by Meeks. It's a little quiet. They're quiet here. I don't know. I don't see a lot of noise. Come on, where's all the noise here? Sammy Cassell must be here. Remember when he made his comment? Oh. Welcome back to North Carolina, where some tremendous and well-remembered student-athletes have passed through, and many of them through this building and through many courses here at North Carolina. And right now, the school is dealing with what some would call a scandal, which is there was a certain curriculum here under which the, allegedly the players never actually did work in classes that they received credit for. And Dick, it's something that Coach Roy Williams has had to deal with and it's been extremely difficult for him and others who have coached here in the past as well. Well, you know, John, talking to people involved with the university, people that have graduated. I talked to one graduate who has two degrees. He said, really, it's been absolutely a disgrace. I'm disappointed. I'm hurt. And most of all, many of my friends who graduated from this fine university, we're angry. We're angry. Where were all these academic advisors during that time? It's incredible. It just started in 93, John. I mean, you can't try to solve this here in a matter of 30 seconds, but it's ugly, it's disgraceful. We haven't certainly seen the end of it. The NCA is looking into it right now. But I will say this, coaches are told by the academic people to stay away. I talked to a number of coaches. Don't get involved with their classes. Let us handle that. Well, I say, where were the academic advisors? They were all part of it. They fired a number of them here and got rid of them. And I'll tell you, it is sad because this is one great university. And I know many of their graduates are so disappointed and hurt when that's transpired. Tokyo Phil set to go in line, and it just uh, put a period at the end of that sentence as you look at the replay of Tokyo with the steal and going in. Roy Williams is here, and, and he said he obviously had no knowledge of this, but in backing him up, Mac Brown works with me every Saturday on college football. He was the football coach here when this allegedly started. Butch Davis works with us as well, and he, of course, was the coach for much of this. They both said the same thing. Coaches do not know about what's going on with academics. They will find out. Nice shot by Utah from the outside. They'll find out if a player's going to class or not. They will find that out, and they'll make them run or make them come early, longer hours in the weight room to make up for things that happen that they can control. But as far as which course they're taking, how many credits this one counted towards, what the curriculum was this, they, they don't have knowledge of that. They just Absolutely. don't at yep. any university. Absolutely. However, let's face reality. Coaches are responsible for the people that are in their program and have to be accountable to a certain degree. However, in this scenario here, this was flat out cheating done by a lot of academic advisors out there manipulating big time classes and grades to get players eligible. Well, and it wasn't only players. It wasn't 40, only players. Exactly. 48% 40, were athletes. 52% were non athletes who were getting paper classes, never showing up. And that's a disgrace. Humiliation and embarrassment to all the quality people that have graduated here and did things the right way. Well, they are waiting. Oh, what a good oh, pass by Tokyo! That was that a page. What anticipation, reaction. Basketball is a game of reaction. I love that. See that makes me out of my seat. I like that. Offensive foul, and then he 
takes the charge. I mean, great play. Took it all right there. Has helped this club. Take a look at his touch pass. Right there, he anticipates. He knows where Page is right there. Dumps it off. Usually it's Page to tuck it off. A tremendous look, John. Wow, that gets me going, man. I love that kind of basketball. That's being unselfish. That's playing within the team. T for togetherness, E for effort, A for attitude, M for mental toughness. And I know you are mentally tough with all the assignments you have. Mentally tough to sit next to you. <laughs> Tokido comes up. He jumps down the rocks as well. Tokido really is having a nice little spurt here in the last two minutes. Right? Dickerson pulls it back out. Woke up the crowd. They woke up the crowd. They're standing up cheering. And the effort. Look at the defensive effort now. They're getting after it defensively. It's amazing how a play offensively can give you a great spark defensively. Yes, Sal. Look at that blast of the ball. Jump shot from the baseline. No good. Rebounded by Meeks. I see a little up the ball swinging a little bit to Chapel Hill. Meeks now with seven rebounds. Bob goes inside. Great hands. They hang on to that ball and drop it in. He seals off. Good T.O., baby. Right there by Freddie McCaffrey. Uncle Mo. Uncle Mo has arrived here in Chapel Hill. There's a dump down inside. Good post presence. Good hands. Kennedy Meeks with the score down in the box. Seals off. Stays with it. He's a big white body. Very effective. I got a green out here today. On church recycled. Yeah, he's part of a program. The university is running. Reprieve, it's called. Every one of these green t-shirts are made of two recycled bottles. Hey, John, I'll show you that they haven't lost faith here in the university. Some of the alumni. What about this contribution today? Just today to the university, to the School of Pharmacy. You ready for this? Your kind of cash. Yeah. $100 million donated by Mr. Fred Eshelman. $100 million, you heard me. Why don't he just give $99 million, give us a million to the Reed Foundation? <laughs> uh, but Fred Eshelman, really, that shows faith, loyalty, love for his university. And the building already has his name on it. Yeah. So he, you can bet he's given a bunch of money to the university already. He's a founder and former CEO of Pharmaceutical Product Development. Gassell. Rims right out. And Meeks grabs another rebound. Meeks trying to lock down inside. I'm going to try to reverse the ball and dump it into him. Page reaching by Clemens. Don't want to put him on the line. He's the best free throw shooter in the history of North Carolina. There were some pretty good players that have come here. One and one. If you say you're the best in any category in the history of North Carolina, you're pretty good. You know what I mean? They've had a few players here? Yeah. <laughs> They've had a few players, a few athletes here. This guy's like automatic on a free throw. I watch me jinx him. What did yeah, I tell you? You did. What did I tell you? It's unbelievable how that always happens. I saw you do that to Terry Gannon this afternoon <laughs> when I was watching the replay of the 83 ACC championship. Team backs it out. Good step out by Meeks there. Good help defensively. Nice cut. You top. Had a good little shot. Shot selection so big in front of Tampa Jackson with his team. Taking good shots. Barry pulls it back out. Some out of Orlando, Florida. So play at a high school level, John. He's going to be a good player here. Talking to him. Coming up so athletic. We're talking about athleticism. We're talking about quickness. White. Nice going hard and foul goes against Carolina. He's earned his journey to the free throw line with that one. Had a good angle. Freshman Pinson gets in. Goes to the basket. Has the contact from the back. ACC is going to be certainly interesting this year with Duke and Carolina. Certainly Louisville, Rick Latino's club. 
Played really well last night defensively against a good Ohio State team. Think about what they mentioned the ACC. Very few people mentioned the name Virginia. And all they did was win the ACC tournament and regular season, and they're very good again this year. Trying to go to half court trap. Ball movement. Page. They got the shot they wanted. Reverse the ball, a little diagonal pass. Defensively, Carolina has turned it up on the wing as Page waiting for it. A little late getting to him, and then he loses it going along the baseline. 29 25, the Tar Heels trying to get out and running. SPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is brought to you by Exodus, Gods and Kings, December 12th, only in theaters, and Wrangler's new advanced comfort jeans. Unbeatable comfort and 20% stronger. Welcome back. Iowa on the road here in the Big Ten ACC Challenge, and they lead North Carolina 29 25. Mike Gasell having a nice evening for himself, moving the ball around, and Markets Page about what you'd expect. Well, the two guards putting points on the board, two teammates in the AU circuit back in Iowa. Marcus played at Lindmore High School. He had great hands in the passing lane. Yeah, buddy of mine from out in Iowa, Craig Mateel, who does a lot of work for us with the D Foundation. In fact, helped me raise close to $100,000 at his big 380 event where we honored Grant McCaffrey. And he said Paige was unbelievable. James with that turnaround on the baseline was a little bit short. We'd love to get that young man going. He's a guy that can be quiet for a half and all of a sudden the second half just explodes. Baseline and Theo Pinson. See the athletic ability to go after that rebound. Over Shaney underneath. Double team. Now he's got to go play some defense again. Very great on Cassell. The jump shot. Hey, shooting really has been tough, John. Yeah, it has been. Nice catch. Aaron White won't miss that shot at the other end very often. Now at this end, nothing for North Carolina. Kids got to work a lot more on shooting the basketball. Simple technique, good elevation, got to tuck the elbow in, get some backspin rotation. Everybody wants to drive, fly to the goal. Learn how to shoot the basketball. Check this in outside. Gisell. Good defense. Staying in front of your man. Beat him to the ball. Gonna switch there. Shot clock's at eight. Down to Olaf Cheney. He's got to go to work. Turn. Too deep and white. Almost got the rebound, but just too far away from the bucket. No at the zone. They want to stay on the same side. You use a relay man, maybe a post player, not a play man to man. They keep changing defenses. Screen up on top. Page. Deep three. That's See, he's got to go to dri drive a little bit more. He's staying too exclusively shooting the three. Now, I know he's a good shooter, but he's got to drive the basketball. So, drives in and he won't go. And Olofini had the rebound momentarily before Pinson grabs it. Tokato. Suddenly there's a cap on both buckets, Dick. It's Brick City, USA. It's like a little teacup up there. Great shooters. It's like the Atlantic Ocean, man, when they let it go. We are all the great shooters I've had over the years. The Alfords, the Chris Mullins, the Reggie Millers. Where are they, John? Um, Hall of Fame. <laughs> Oldest Cheney makes that, and Carolina's missed seven scoreless. His 522 mark. That's a good comeback, man. Hall of Fame, you're right. Next to you. <laughs> now, under a minute to go in the half, and Carolina just 
needs to finish strong. He's turned it up a little defensively. Iowa's played extremely well, and Pinson, the freshman, will go to the free throw line. Well, did Florida State eke out another one? <laughs> they take on Georgia Tech, which is probably going to be the best team that they have played this year. Right, number 11 in the playoff poll, and Florida State dropped to four this week. Saturday, 8 o'clock Eastern time. If they win that game, they will go to the playoffs. I'll tell you one thing, Georgia Tech is tough. They beat Clemson, they beat Georgia, but aren't they missing a great wide receiver? Well, and their, their uh, game breaker has a bad knee as well. So they're in a little bit of a rough situation injury-wise, but the way they run the option and such, they will be fine. A highly recruited freshman. Yeah, I didn't expect a lot of yeah. the kid Jackson and Pinson to contribute to some positive minutes right away. I think, you know, Bill Self said it the other day, and I could agree more. The lack of patience of people. Everybody wants instant gratification out of some kids. You know, some kids just takes a little more time. A kid like Okafor coming up in the next game, he's been able to do it from day one. Not everybody can. Some people need some time to adjust to the academics, to be in college, playing where they're not the number one option. It takes time. Carolina turning up the tight defense. Iowa. Just make fun of Giselle on turtle. Yeah, Giselle off of his foot. Don't go. It's fouled by Ola Janey. Not a play that you want at the end of the half if you're Iowa. Have a chance down here to score. Now you put him on a free throw line. We'll take a look right here. He's going up to Third foul for Ola Janey, too. He's worked hard to try to improve as a free throw shooter took it over. He's always was a struggle on the line. Yeah. Like he right there when he stripped it. He's actually shooting close to 70%, 69%, which is high for him. Almost Cheney go to the bench, still pick up another foul going after a, a rebound with one second left. Much improved from what I saw last year out of Tokyo on a free throw line. Well, Iowa has come into North Carolina and they will go to the locker room with a two point lead. And look at the wow. field goal defense. Press. 28% for the Tar Heels, and even Elvis knows that's not going to win many games. So let's join Kevin Connor, Seth Greenberg, and Jay Williams on the Master Halftime Report. CC Big Ten Challenge presented by Dick's Sporting Goods. Score here at halftime. Iowa leading on the road, 31 to 29. Now part of Jimmy B Week. Cancer research on ESPN as we continue our commitment to the B Foundation and Jim Valvano's dream to defeat cancer. John Saunders alongside of Dick Vitale here in Chapel Hill, and you know, Dick wouldn't be too upset sometimes to, to be here and watch Dean Smith in the old days in the building that, that's named after him, but his team and his protege are struggling right now. Well, struggling shooting the basketball, but it's the first time, first time all year they had at halftime. Even though they lost the Butler, they were up at halftime. So it's really very good in the first half. They had a pitch three. He was playing so aggressively. There he is, pulling out the bounce. Squares his body exceptionally well. Tokido gave a real spurt for about two and a half minutes. He was a difference maker. Here he is right now, going to the bass. Bass gets good change of direction. Tremendous pass, clutch pass. Great feel, great reaction. So let's see if Iowa can continue with defensive pressure because they were terrific in the first half. Double dribble. Get a double dribble. Keep an eye on Marcus Page in the second half. He's one of the premier players in the second half in basketball. Last year he was unreal. Look at the shooting right here. Really pathetic. That's Brick City, man. That's Brick City by North Carolina. Shooting the three, finding another guy to help Page out from the perimeter is going to be really important for that. 
Oh, tremendous defense by Kennedy Meeks. He's blocking shots better this year. Has a little more elevation. Lost a lot of weight. Still feels he's got to get even better shape. Maybe his active, great timing right there. Blocking shots really gets down to timing. Want to keep the ball alive, though. Keep it on the floor. Like Mr. Russell used to do way before your time. White with a nice move. This is one of the things when I was watching that 83 ACC uh, championship before I came over the game. There were a bunch of blocked shots in that game, and all of them seemed to stay in play. And I'll tell you something else you saw versus today. Lots of talent because our players stay in for three and four years. Talent on the floor. North Carolina, North Carolina State game. Just a tremendous Jackson. move by Justin Jackson. Great first step by Jackson. White ahead of everybody else. Oh, oh. Toka Toka. He had the block from behind. They get it with the body, though. Van McCaffrey trying to bring some excitement back. Has an excellent staff. Sherman Dillard's been a head coach. It's a great job, his friend. His wife, Margaret, does a lot of work in the community, helping people, various charities. Looked like he got ball, but his body made contact. Yeah, people look at the hand on the ball and forget that there's contact underneath sometimes. Clement shot the ball well early in the game. Made a couple of big shots to start the game. Talking he's got a bigger guy on him, though, isn't it? Yep. Gisels. Nice bounce pass down to Clemens. Floats. Gets his own rebound and gets fouled. Like a block it out, John. We talk about it so often. Players just don't find their guy. Coaches work on that area, but you just don't see it happen. Everybody releases and wants to go to the basket and rebound. Nobody puts a body on a guy. Nobody put a body on him. Your responsibility in the final stages of playing good defense is to block out. Just couldn't keep the toes inbounds, or the heels rather, and just lean back trying to get that pass. You know, Fran has taken four schools to the NCAA tournament. How many coaches can claim that? Did a great job and he was at Siena. Carolina hasn't led since it was 3-2. A chance to do just that. Under the post. Johnson turns around. Battle underneath and Meeks drops it down. And there's the big guy inside, Kennedy Meeks. Nothing like having a big, strong body. Hanging around the basket, has some good touch. I mean, working, using his strength, keeps the ball alive. Here's the catch. Here's the conversion. A little spin into the lane. Took four schools to the NCAA tournament. Took schools such as Lehigh, North Carolina, Greensboro, Siena, and now Iowa. That's a pretty good achievement. Only one coach has taken five. A little trivia out there. One coach has taken five. I will tell you this he's coaching in the Big 12, and his name is not Self. Who will ultimately go to the Hall of Fame? I think I know who it is. You do? I think so. Clemens. Nice drive. Oh, great finger roll. He had tremendous drive right there by Clemens. Got into the scene, attacked the offensively. Did a great job attacking offensively. Here he is splitting the defense. And there's that finger roll. You don't see that shot much anymore. Oh, tremendous. All right, who is it? Come on now, who is it? Five schools to the NCAA tournament. Big 12 coach. Nope. Oklahoma. Oh, okay. Mr. Kruger. Give me my next one. <laughs> Go to right to the inside. See next choice. That reminds me of when one year I picked the top five coaches in the country. I had to go to Villanova, and Roly Massimino was screaming at me. Wow, his son, grandson, by the way, is uh, working on the staff in Iowa, Tommy. But Roly screaming. I said, Roly, you were number six. ESPN hey, just hey. ran it off. They didn't run it off six. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, had a good look at it three, but a lot better of it. Good ball reversal right here. Match up on Page. Page launches off the mark. Tokido rebounds it right back at it and goes to the free throw line. That was a big time offensive rebound by Tokido. Showing that great bounce off the floor. Had a little spoiling pink ball when he bounced right off that floor. There goes what's out. There's the catch. Strong drive. Now he's got to convert. And I'll tell you one thing, he looked so much better on the free throw line earlier in his game than he looked last year.
Well, that, now you're two for two jinxing people. That's unbelievable. <laughs> That's unbelievable. Line to the, <laughs> Roy Williams is going to come over here yep. with a cork and say, put this, put this in your mouth, Dick. Right next to uh, Roy to his right, Steve Robinson, former head coach as well, Florida State. Wow. Not good. Michelle with a quick push. Crowd very passive here tonight, very passive. You surprised that they're not doing anything to get Woodbury involved at all? Yeah, but Woodbury's got to want the ball, John. He's going to be a little more assertive offensively. He's very skilled. You're going to want this. See, right there, they shouldn't give it to him. He was open. Utah, he tipped it in. There's the follow. He tipped it into big guy. Yeah, but you, you don't want your big guy just cleaning up junk, do you? No, I mean, you want to be able to use him as a guy. Maybe he could pass the ball. I know exception well. Get him some touches inside, but he's got to get free. Creating space. Quick hands and forces a turnover. Another double dribble. John, one of the real lost arts in basketball by a lot of players is creating space to get free. You know, a lot of guys can shoot a ball, they shoot it well when they're doing drills, but you put a guy on them, they can't create space. The whole idea is to get space. Guys like the Durants of the world, they get space. I don't care how much the defense tries to key on them. It's great to have him back, by the way, in the NBA. The ball's tipped, so that belongs to Iowa. Yes, it is. Always a better, better league when the MVP is playing. Such a great young guy. My new book, I do a whole section about the way he never forgot where he came from. His speech in terms of winning that MVP was so special. Oh, that's a bad pass. He luckily got away, but that was a bad pass. Yeah, I think it's also a bad foul, though. I don't think Tokyo was going to get that ball. That was a Marconi special, man. He telegraphed that baby. That's two on Tokyo, though. He goes to the bench. Well, the one thing they have this year, North Carolina, they're a deeper basketball team, a team committed a lot more to the defensive end. I was actually controlling the kind of tempo of this game. North Carolina has not been allowed to get out of transition, run up and down. Cell trying to keep that dribble alive as long as he can. Woodbury now. And one of the keys has been Cassell. And in the offense. Utah. You can see that ball start to veer to the left as soon as it left his hand. And Utah gets back though and comes up with a strip. Bad play right there. Offensively, lack of efficiency by North Carolina in the transition. Page kicks the ball. You now we talk about transition. It starts with ball possession. Whether it be a rebound, you can do it off a score. You got to push the ball. You got to fill wings. You got to have trailers. I mean, North Carolina for years ran the transition game. Unbelievable. I'll never forget. You said you're watching the games in '83 today. Brad Darty was one of the greatest in the game as a trail man in their transition game. That find him as a trail guy, man, he knocked that 15 footer down. Goes me. Nothing doing, and Pooch gets fouls. the rebound. And then mm. he fouls. Silly foul right there by Oglesby, a veteran player. Well, you're upset that you missed the shot. You're going after the rebound and commit the foul. But Iowa still clinging to a two-point lead. If you laugh, you think, and you cry, that's a full day. That's a heck of a day. is one of the best and most talented big men in the country. Stick around for the next game, Duke against Wisconsin. Mr. Kaminsky can do it all, Dick. Yeah, he's going to really make Oklahoma go out on the floor and chase him because he's an inside-outside presence. That's a terrific matchup, Wisconsin and Duke. I think some players we know about the great front court of Wisconsin. Take a look at Duke. I mean, amazing. Mike Krzyzewski only 10 wins shy of 1,000. Wisconsin 7-0 for the second straight year. They do a phenomenal job of shot selection. Bo Ryan has been incredible over in Madison. That place will be electric. It's part of our journey to the tourney presented by Sonic. There's what the drives Page can make. He knows capable of making the outside shot. Pinson goes right into Woodbury and he blocks it. Utah goes after that loose ball. Still empty from the perimeter, North Carolina. Can't make that perimeter shot. But Butler beat them. Butler beat him because of the three-point line and a free throw. 
Muller had nine threes to only four for North Carolina. That's a difference maker. Woodbury turns around and rattles it down. There it is. He says, hey, John Saunders. He says I should get the rock. One of my players get me the rock. My teammates, I can score. Since Carolina took the lead. Oh, nice a 7-0 oh. run. <laughs> Kennedy Meeks. Lack of communication defensively. Nobody found Meeks. Meeks wide open. They threw a diagonal pass up to him. And he gets the score. And it brings the crowd a little alive. By the end of this year, or by his midseason, Kennedy Meeks is going to be a beast to handle. Woodbury down there. And Kennedy Meeks, by being in position, causes that turnover. Yeah, he walks prior to getting fouled to contact. I watched the diagonal pass. And then throw it over to defense, and there's Meeks wide open. And he couldn't get an easier look. I was still hanging to deuce lead. Led by two at the half. First time that North Carolina has been on the deficit side of halftime. Well, Meeks is in double digits in rebounding already. This is the fifth time this year that that's happened. Turnover by Page. They're really playing Page tough. They said, hey, you're from Iowa. You didn't want to wear our uniform. You're not going to embarrass us and humiliate us even on your floor. They have really welcomed the challenge, Iowa, against this incredible talent. You talk about premier guards in America. You better start talking Marcus Page. Nice pass down to Utah. Tries to reverse it. But what I started to say was Meeks, it's the fifth time this year he's had double digits in rebounding. He had five all of last year, the entire year. Well, he really worked so hard on the conditioning program with their trainers, and he's made himself into a really solid player this year, his second year. He's another example right there. So patience takes time. Hey, by the way, Paige, his grandfather, so my grandfather loves Iowa. He loves Iowa, but I don't think That's he's right. cheered by Iowa tonight. <laughs> He, he said he wasn't sure. He, said he thought all of the rest of his family, he was sure that they would be cheering for Carolina. But his grandfather, he says, might actually cheer against him tonight. Oh, fuck that. Being a granddad, I can tell you this, I will bet his grandfather's cheering for him. In basketball, I, I've seen you try and play hoops against your grandkids. Oh. <laughs> you, you take them hard to the basket. Carolina is, is deep this year, it seems as well, right? Yeah, they're a much deeper basketball team than last year. Oh, right there, nice extra pass. <laughs> Sometimes you need a little help to talk it down, and there's Nate Britt, the righty, lefty, righty. Britt, a little switch hitter right there, <laughs> makes that shot. What was the extra pass? The extra pass by Meeks. Unselfish, gave the ball up. I see him go to the free throw line so he can shoot, he can shoot his free throws left hand. I think one of the keys so far for Fran McCarthy's club is they have kept North Carolina out of transition. They have not allowed him to get the number game. Shot clock at five as Utah releases. He knew he was going to miss that one after his own rebound. Now that's going to be tough. Oglesby handles it. How many more picks we did you see tonight? outside, no good. And that is probably not something that <laughs> was called for right there. We're going to take a look right here at Brits 3. Based on the reversal of the basketball, he gets the roll his way. Roy likes it, the Hall of Famer. What Hall of Fame coaches when you look at the ACC? It's unbelievable. Jim Beheim, Rick Pitino. You got Roy Williams, and then you got a coach down at Duke, I think, is in the Hall of Fame as well. Is he not? You may have heard of him. <laughs> Again, going back to that ACC game, but in 1983, it was so interesting. You were talking about all the great programs in the ACC, and he said, "And Duke, I, I think they're going to, they're going to be a program that's coming along because <laughs> they've got a coach Mike Krzyzewski that's pretty good. They're going to be coming along, so it's fun to go back and watch some of those old games." So we're watching that today. Yes. I wonder if I get any compensation when they have those reruns. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think so. <laughs> Not the ESPN. Oh, nice strong move underneath. Jackson drops it down. Nice little move operating on the baseline. Oh. She's been real quiet, Johnson. Yeah, he gets back to the other end real quickly, too. 
He's been real quiet. He's kind of got his good points. So give it to him right now. Nice trail. Oh, oh, oh. Nice there's a trail man in a transition game. That's been working. That is now starting to become part of their offensive arsenal here. Run, baby, run. That's what the Cardinals want to do. And I was saying we're going to slow you down. Carolina turning up the pressure in a three-point lead. Clemens backs it out. His brick gets right on him. He nope. steps out as well. Nothing like a transition layup and a jam to get the crowd all excited. Mark stay down for Clemens. Follows his own. They're pushing the ball now, man. They want to run. They want to run. Yeah, that was Jock at the other end, and then pinching the freshman. Out of there quickly, but nothing doing. This is all you, partner. Here they go, John. Run, baby, run. Look at Beach trailing with the transition, with the jam. And they love it in Clear Hill Country. Have the lead. After trailing at halftime. 43-40 right now. 11:39 left in regulation. And that got the Tar Heel faithful up and working fine. Yeah, they got the transition game going. You know, you really have a feel for Fran McCaffrey and his wife Margaret. Last year in the tournament, there he's trying to coach against Tennessee in the NCAA tournament. His son was being operated on for a malignant tumor. There's a look at Patrick, a tremendous young guy, Fran. And I'll tell you one thing, he and his buddy, Austin, can you believe this? He and his buddy both came down with cancer. His buddy has T-cell lymphoma. We send the best out to Austin Schrader. And certainly Patrick is going to be a heck of a player. Patrick's cancer, by the way, is in remission. Had a thyroid tumor. As a look at Austin, I was at an event over in Riverside, Iowa. Put on my Craig Mateel at 380. Great for Austin. We, we he's made, yeah, he's a terrific young guy. We sent our prayers to you, Austin. And if you want to help, because eventually all the money you give to cancer organizations, whether it's the V Foundation or others, is going to help solve this problem someday. GeneV.org or 1-800-4-GeneV. Remember, with the V Foundation, every single penny that you donate will go to cancer research. So please, please help. Yeah, please help, because remember, you may be saving the life of someone you love. Oh, nice split by Clements and finds White on the outside. He doesn't miss too many of those. Ola Sheeney really hasn't played much in this half. Clements shot off the mark. Three opportunities are going to get a third chance. That's how Butler beat him at 29 offensive rebounds. Which is un unreal. Unbelievable. 29 offensive rebounds in a 40 minute game. Did shoot the ball while Butler, but they really got up on the glass. Oglesby had Ola Sheeney underneath him. Got better up. Stepped out of bounds. Clements can't find his way around. We're here in Chapel Hill, North Carolina. John Saunders and Dick Vitale, 43-40. The hometown squad is on top in the ACC Big Ten Challenge. Duke in Wisconsin follows us from Madison, Wisconsin. I think the next four minutes are really big for Iowa. This is kind of a danger time for them. They can't allow a spurt by North Carolina who's capable of a spurt. They stay down in the baseline. Oh, wide open. Has it taken? Rick doesn't want to shoot that. Shot clock now at five. Toe gets a trip to the line, and that is a great play. When you don't have a shot, time is running down. Take it to the hole and get fouled. Yeah, but now but you gotta convert. To finish it now, you gotta convert. The last time he went to the free throw line, it was two that were empty. He's gotta make them now here. Get a little space on that scoring margin. Nice stroke right there. Looked a lot better. I was at the second 21 season. The last time that happened was before the 2005 2006 season. You know, Fran was an assistant for years under Digger. Yes, sir. Our guy Digger. Yes, sir. I'm just seeing Digger around. Digger around. Certainly did a great job with the Fighting Irish in Notre Dame. Great job with us for 20 years, too. Well, it looks like Carolina has turned up the intensity of their defense. 
That's what a lead will do for you. Coming to a down at half five. Cassell. Oh, watch this. Tried to draw a foul after he released that. Wide right open. Wide right open. open. You got to make yes, somebody shot. They John. missed a bunch of those, and then so for so. Ooh, that's an error to reach in and cause that foul. Three top 15 teams headline the SEC Big 12 doubleheader. At seven, Miles Turner leads sixth ranked Longhorns against number one Kentucky. We had a chance to see Texas last week. They look very, very good for Rick Barnes. Billy Donovan's reloaded Gators and Bill South's 11th ranked Jayhawks. Each looking for a statement win. SEC Big 12 Challenge begins Friday at 7 on ESPN, the home court for college hoops. I always love going down there to Rock Chalk, Jayhawk land. One of the great venues in all of college basketball. Gators come to town. I tell you one thing, when you talk about Miles Turner, his numbers have been getting better and better and better. But he better have his A game against that Kentucky team. They just want so many bodies at you. They're the best defensive team I have seen in 30 years. Kentucky, because of their size. John, you better make perimeter shots because you get nothing on the interior against them. The white drive, I'll wait for a stop it because I, I gotta go back on that. I know it's gonna go to Georgetown. You're gonna go to Georgetown. No, 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 that's the Patrick right. Ewing's club was great defensively, but didn't have as many bodies as the Kentucky team. So I will take you court, Mr. Saunders, and I will battle you. I love Patrick Ewing. I love that North Georgetown team. But this team at Kentucky has so many big people. My question is actually going to be, do you mean that relative to today's player versus, say, the players from the Eagles? Because, I mean, we agreed today coming in that when we talked about the players that were on the floor because they had to stay three and four years, that the quality of players, the talent level was much better back then. I agree with you on that statement. I agree with you on that. But I'm telling you now, the only way you're going to beat this Kentucky team, you better pitch a Villanova game like Willie Massimino did when they beat Georgetown. A perfect game because you're not going to get shots inside, John. You're going to make perimeter shots. This Iowa team cannot get a field goal here in the second half. They are 3 of 20. I mean, that's got to be frustrating to a coach. I mean, you could create opportunities for your team with your offensive patterns, but they got to make shots. And right now, they're lucky and fortunate they're only down two. You shoot three for 20, you think you're in big, big trouble on the road. But you're right here at a chance to win this game. I wonder how that does with grip because he shoots it with a different hand. What that does with his dribble as well. Meek ducks under and will go to the free throw line. That was a nice move by him. He used the drop step really well. He's learned how to use his body to protect the basketball, get on the interior of a defensive player. Here he's watching the snap. There he is right now. He's going to take a nice drop step. See that drop step? Get over that top foot to seal that defensive player off. If he goes a little wider, the defensive player rotates and beats him to the spot. Those numbers are going to go up. Double, double. And his chance to be a special player, and I think that he's going to really dedicate himself to getting into that trainer's room and really work out. Nutrition, watch what you eat. Well, he's, a, he's a young man. I mean, sometimes you got to get rid of a, a little extra weight you care because of your age. Sometimes you'll naturally come out of that, but hard work Certainly going to help a lot more than the freshman out there to clean that up. Well, he played fairly well in the last two games. UNC beat two ranked teams, beat UCLA and Florida. Cardinals only gave up an average of 60 points a game in those two games. UCLA's got a great player by the name of Looney. I can't wait. I'm going after UCLA for the Gonzaga game to see the Zags. Everybody's raving. In fact, like Jeff Goodman says he thinks they're going to win the national championship. Jock drops it in the corner. Jock can shoot the ball. He gets opportunities. He's capable of making shots. Well, every trip is a workout for Iowa. And again, you know, Utah settles for the outside shot. And there's just nothing there. And that's one of the strengths of this club in North Carolina. Nobody has shot 40% against them all year. That gives you always a chance to win. Barry, well, that was well off the mark. He's going to be a problem at times for Carolina as well. Right back out, Jock. 
pulls up on the baseline. And he can't get a shot to go either. Hard work is the only thing that's paying off as Woodbury finally drops it home. There's your guy Woodbury, John, working on the inside. They don't want to get the ball. He gets it off the glass. And he scores on the offensive rebound. You guys don't like having it. The only way to get points is to get rebounds and stick them back. Got to beat them. White almost causes a turnover. Oh, how about that block by Utah? Simmons attempted his first shot of the game and said, forget about it. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is brought to you by Dick's Sporting Goods. Every season starts at Dick's. Welcome back, and we want to remind you what to watch for later tonight. Top five matchup between Frank Kaminsky, rather, in Wisconsin, and Jaleel Okafor and Duke. And in Texas, Kentucky, on Friday, Miles Turner, one of the great young players in the country against Kentucky, who has a bunch of great young players on their team. Got it. Look at those numbers, John. Four for years. 24. Unbelievable. Poor oh, that, shooting. Yeah, that's just. That, 0 for 10 from the three, and yet you're only in a situation where you're down two on a roll. You would think statistically, automatically, they're going to start making some shots. Well, this will keep you in games when there's some turnovers and, <laughs> and when there's some fouls. North Carolina has not been effective offensively either. They have not really played very efficient. Haven't had good ball movement, player movement. I was kept staying in the game at the free throw line now. 14, 14 of 15. Cassell gets a timeout. And on the floor, losing the ball. It's a very close game, but not a well played game. Well, that means sometimes you can get a great finish. So we'll pray for that. It's not going to be uncommon anymore to see freshmen pop up on the wooden watch. And this guy. Is as good as any of them. He's so smooth, John. He is absolutely so smooth. Look at the moves on the inside. Come out of Chicago, big time player. Let me test it today by certainly Frank Kaminsky, who can go inside, outside. Look at those numbers. Very impressive. All within the framework of a team concept for both guys as well. That'll be one incredible matchup. It's on our Wendy's Wooden Watch. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see if they allow Okafor and Kaminsky to go at each other and sometimes they'll take Kaminsky away from the hole you know to make well he's make capable stretch he, I know he can make the three yeah he can make the three let's see what picks up here because it has been not very smooth and fluid offensively both clubs playing hard on the defensive end and really struggling shooting the basketball the pass it underneath and then Woodbury gets it off of white Woodbury moving the feet, or at least pretending he was. We talked about his skills. He's got good skill level shooting the ball, passing the ball. He's got to be a little more assertive offensively. Big play right there. Answer right back by Page. This is where he excels, Sean. There's no one really much better at the end of the game than Marcus Page. Last year he was dynamite at the end of the game. Leave Woodbury alone and we just saw how he can shoot it. They've done a great job defending on White. White is one of the worst out players in the Big Ten. I've not been able to get really a lot of good opportunities. Uh, Woodbury gets the zip pass from Gassell and sends it home. He now has 10 points. I think all of a sudden they listen to my buddy. They listen to my guy, Mr. Saunders. They're going to Mr. Woodbury and Coach Saunders right here. Oh, even a broken clock is right twice a day, Dick. There it is right there. Nice little catch inside, wide open. Left-handed playing. Look at Marcus right now. Gets that screen, uses the screen well, oh, steps behind shot. the three. Well, he strokes, he always got a it's chance. A step to back go that I'm talking about. Yep. Is that, I mean, you coach, is that something that kids come up now just having the natural ability to do that, or is that something you, you have to learn a lot? You know, Jordan, of course, Made, made a little bit of a living doing that, but you don't see a lot of players who are capable of making that. Well, I think a lot of guys work on it, having to be a taught, move, and utilize it in a practice situation. 
on a regular basis. Some pretty good players right there. Are you kidding me? Look at those names. Number 23, Michael the Magnificent. He was as good as could be. I have a section of my new book about him. I'll never forget getting a nice little kiss from his mom, saying, thank you for those beautiful things you said about my son. Wow, who would have ever thought? I mean, I knew he was going to be good, but I never thought he'd be cut the greatest of all time. When he went to the NBA, it was unreal what he achieved. He touched that in a minute. Jackson a little bit too strong. He was in that 83 game that I was watching. Between North Carolina and North Carolina State. Gassell, what a just, I mean, I love the kid's toughness and his willingness to go in amongst the trees. Plus, able to knock down the outside shot, although tonight's not a good example. Well, you like that 83 game. You know who was a producer when I did that game? The one that made was John Wildhack, our boss from Syracuse. John Wildhack, I believe, produced that game. He did in produce it. You, oh, did. it. you mentioned it during the game. I, did. I didn't tell you that, but. Gasell. I gave him publicity. I gave him notoriety. Yeah, and that wow. was 30 years ago. Wow. That was a nice play there. Gasell, that backdoor cut. I bet back then, if, if, if people had been betting, there would have been a lot more money on John Wildhack being around 30 years later than you. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I'll tell you this. You know what's amazing about that run in North Carolina, uh, North Carolina State? To get in the NCAA tournament the year Jimmy won the national oh. title, they had to beat Virginia with Ralph Sampson. They had to beat Carolina with Michael Jordan. They had to beat a good Wake Forest just to get in the tournament. All right, let's go down the stretch here, John. It's still down a winning time right now. Sell great find in the corner. Let me get him with the shot. Here's where you win the game. Free throw line, shot selection. Oh, there's the key to Page. I mean that. He's in and here and great anticipation by Page. Get back defensively. Come up with the steal. Open it there. Oh, they had three opportunities. <laughs> Very tenacious, but they came up empty. How patient shot selection. The key in winning a game at this juncture of a game is taking good shots with the right people shooting the ball. Know the strengths, know the weaknesses of your team. White, who they have actually done a pretty nice job on defensively. They've done a great job on him. They've kept him very quiet. Clemens goes in and just has Jackson. Reject him and hammer him that way, and we're going to go to break. Tied at 51 apiece. It's been sloppy at times, but it's been around for a good minute. All right, guys, thanks a lot. That, I mean, it's, it's interesting that Notre Dame is able to pull that one out against Michigan State. It's Michigan State, the team that. At times this year has looked as good as anybody else. But then struggled. Oh, no. Have you uh, seen them? Yeah, I did their game the other day against Kansas. Okay. They're going to be a good basketball team. They're going through a little stage right now. That's a tough game. You played on the road, coming off a game on a neutral floor against Kansas. They're going to win their share of games, Tom, as those kids. You know what's interesting here, John? You think a kid like White. White has had such a great start this year, shooting 58% for the year so far. He's their like leading scorer. Today, he's 0 for 6. 0 for 6, but he is, that's a stop hustling. He's 8 for 8 on the free throw line, and he has 8 rebounds as well, showing his versatility. That foul, by the way, was on Kennedy Meeks, and that's his fourth. And as of right now, he's still on the floor. He has to pop up and look at the hustle by Utah to get that loose ball. Great play by Utah to come up with that. That's a breakdown by North Carolina, allowing him to get that offensive rebound on a second opportunity. And down to three minutes on the clock. Woodbury had the ball inside. Meeks got four fouls. Can't really check him. Strong. Not getting the ball. I know, and he's pushing him out, too, so. And a switch. Throw the ball. ball and a switch, yep. White. It's bumped. He created a foul opportunity with the little ball fake. Toe -to with the foul there. Reese Davis, Danny Cannell, Kirk Hershey, David Pollock, and probably much more people. Sunday, the selection committee's final rankings will be revealed in the college football playoff selection show presented by AT&T. 12-3.
so excited about that. We got Alabama, we got Florida State, we got Georgia, and we got Ohio State there in that crew. What? Yeah, when you think what, about what it. are you for against? Well, those guys right there. <laughs> they're all the guys on the set here. Oh, Alabama. okay. Yep. Oh, okay. Went to school. I was wondering where you were going with that one. <laughs> it's like, whoa, this, a whole bunch of stuff has to happen to well, that to be the final four. That's got a really tough time here with North Carolina. I would really pick it up their defense. Jackson. Oh, what a drive. And able to score even though he switched hands. Yeah, nobody rotated over. That's the strength he's going to give them. With athleticism, was a big time recruit. That was a big possession right there. Roy Weaver's down, cheering like crazy. Once that defensive stop. Remember, I was looking for that first signature win of the year. Cell swings it outside the Utah. He shots too deep. Clemens chased down the ball, but it ricocheted like a pinball. Last touch by him. Watch this drive. They can change this to the right hand. Yeah, great change of direction right there. Nobody rotated over. Now, see, the back guy's got to step in front of him. You got to step in front of him. You can't let him get to the basket. Can't give him that layup. Put him on the line. That works. Eight. Now, this is going to be interesting to see just how dependent North Carolina is at this time on their star play. See, that's really great execution. Now, why? Because you get the ball to your star for the basketball on the game on the line, and he's the premier free throw shooting in the history of the university. I said that earlier, and he missed one. There's no way he'll miss that, because there's no way he's missing two in a row. I will tell you that, John. Put it in your book right now. Chart it right there. Chart it. Chart it right there. Go ahead. Put two down. John Madre's putting them down already, our great stock guy. He's replaying. He's not even wasting time. Put him down, John. John's smart. He knows. Went to law school. I mean, are you kidding me? He's automatic, that kid with the game on the line. You don't want to put him on the line. Oh, he could the Carolina fans. Iowa's got to get an execution here. Mr. White, their veteran player, he has not scored from the field. And assert himself here. Show why he's a star. Clemens redirects his own shot. Utah with another big rebound. And he'll go to the free throw line. Gonna come down to the free throw line. Just like in football, those special situations, they become difference makers. That's it for Meeks. That's Kennedy Meeks sends him to the bench. Goes to overtime. That's a big plus for Iowa. This Clemens with a strong drive. Lansing Sext Sexton High School. Fifteen points, another double double, twelve rebounds. A terrific game by Kennedy Meeks. Uh, it's just one of many he's going to have this season. Yeah, he's an approved player, there's no doubt. All because of his physical stature, working hard in the weight room, working hard with his nutrition. I mean, here it is, John. Free throw line. I mean, that's going to drive Freddie McCaffrey. I don't know if he can keep his here. Uh, nice not making sure. Look at Royce. Look at the block out. Block out. A lost start in the game. Put a body on the guy. Duke and Wisconsin coming up when we're done, but it doesn't seem like these teams are in a hurry to leave. Tied at 55 right now. You got a really key on page now because this is where he usually wants the ball and he excels. Great with the drive to the left hand and you talk to the big rebound. Now you, gotta sell. Be, you gotta be a little patient here. You gotta make sure that you get a quality shot. And if you're North Carolina, you better find the guy and block out. I give him that second opportunity. Almost had the shot and turned it down. You can sell with it now. Move to his left and Woodbury through the lane. Clear it out. And Gassell takes advantage of the clear out. A terrific drive by Gassell right down the gut of the defense. North Carolina initially played really solid defense, but then right here a breakdown. Look at that gap in scene. And he takes advantage of it, the veteran player. Real cerebral play right there by Gazelle. Remember he played on the AAU team together with Marcus Page out of Iowa? Yeah, he's wanting to prove that. Yeah, I'm every bit as good as the guy who decided to turn down Iowa and wind up in North Carolina. A great drive. It's all set up by Woodbury. Rick now swings it to Page. They're going to get a screen on him. They got the big guy bothering them. 
They got white on him, showing his versatility. He he made it stay with him. him. Well, if he gets a screen, he should be able to go by him. There he is, he goes by him right there. Oh, and he commits the offensive foul. Ooh, that was a big play. Big play, that was a legitimate goal, John. Oh, it was, but I'm not sure why Page moved so far to his left. And right now he goes to the goal. Defense is set, no question. He's, he's afraid of the shot blocker in the middle. That's what causes this, because he had space to go right at Woodbury and decided to go left. Almost stole the inbounds, but I got to back it off, take some time off that clock, you're up three. And now White's going to call the timeout. Right now, let's check in with Carl Roberts. Like, I think when Page got that offensive foul, I think he did not go directly to the bucket where the space was because Woodbury was there waiting to block the shot. So he went to his left, and that's where he, he drew the charge. He made contact. So far, the big play in the game was Gazelle. And right now, it is Page. See, right now, he sees, he's got a gap, but he sees Woodbury's presence. He veers out and makes contact. There is no doubt that that was a charge. Gasell's drive down the lane was so big that three-point play. It was, and that was set up by Woodbury first going down the lane and clearing out, and that's what caused the confusion down there. So Woodbury coming up big here in the second half. Yeah, Woodbury's had a strong second half. Offensively asserted himself a little. Takes some time off that clock. North Carolina, they're going to take time off that clock. Yeah, they just want a defensive stop now, they? Question, no fouling now. The worst thing that could happen. And then they're going to stop. They're going to fight. Clemens back outside. He's off then drives in. Everything was about driving in for Iowa because they were not going to take a perimeter shot. They, they better, wanted to go to the free throw line. They better find Page, man. Iowa better find Page. Three pointer up the front of the iron. Timeout, Iowa. Looks like Iowa's going to be jubilant. Looks like they're going to have a tremendous flight back home. I know one of the big fans, Ray Cole, TV Ray's going wild right now. So is my buddy Craig Mateel, who's an Iowa fan out there. See the Rapids, and here it is. Page comes trying to shoot it over to size. White, White's size affected that, his size. I'll tell you one thing about White. He didn't score from the field, but he never stopped hustling, and he ne never stopped doing all the little things. Went to the free throw line, he converted, he rebounded. I mean, this is a gutty win because they shot the ball really not well at all. I mean, their statistics are unbelievable the way they shot the ball. They second half, they were three for 20 at one time. Well, I always come into a very, very difficult place to win. And it looks like they're going to walk out of here with one. They'll probably dance out of here with one. They well, walk. They've been really so much in need of a signature win. I mean, they've had wins this year, but they haven't beaten anybody of quality. They had two quality shots with Texas and Syracuse, and they came up empty. So this is a win that can make you go home, feel good about yourself. It gets a little bit of a rush for your fans. They get all excited. Hey, speaking about underrated teams, John, keep an eye right there in the state of Iowa, Northern Iowa, Ben Jacobson's team. They are going to be a team to reckon with. Wichita State in that same conference, the Missouri Valley, we know how good they are. They're on eight for 33 in the second half, and they win the game, basically. Unless they, you got a surprise here. If they find a way to lose this, you got a surprise. They're eight for 33, John. Do you hear me, Mr. Saunders? Eight for 33. But the foul line was big for them. 19 that, for 22. That's incredible. And, and so, I said how difficult it is to come in here. Under Roy Williams in this building, 86 and three against non-conference opponents. That's not bad. That's not bad. <laughs> 86 <laughs> and three. That is like these fans here have not come here very often and seen this team lose. There's a little passiveness among the fans. I mean, they're all sitting back too, John, thinking about the academic scandal that's hanging about. Hanging on this program. The Big Ten has clinched the ACC Big Ten Challenge. Regardless of what 
The ACC does the rest of the way. Eight wins. That's all you need to clinch it. They've done just that. Eight to three, and Duke be the next team the ACC will try and hang their hat on. Well, Jim Delaney, the commissioner, must be dancing with joy, even though he went to North Carolina out of St. Benedict's. A good win for the kids from Iowa. They came on a roll. They gutted it out. They played tenacious basketball defensively, and they were able to leave here with a W because they did not do it with shooting the ball. They did it with cheap defense. We're going to see both of these teams down the road as we head towards March. Duke and Wisconsin will be next. But first, let's send it to the studio with Carl Ravitch and Jay Williams.